Today we consider great deception number four, Marxism, Western culture's most powerful cult. Our guiding verse in this series is Psalm 2.1. Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Why are people so easily deceived? Why do they embrace so many foolish ideas? Marx said religion was the opiate of the masses. I have found Marxism to be the opiate of intellectuals. Let's examine it more closely. According to Yoram Hazoni, the great Israeli scholar, Marxism is back and making an astonishingly successful bid to seize control of our thinking. Marxist ideas influence the most important American media companies, universities, schools of all kinds, major corporations, philanthropic organizations, and even the courts, the government bureaucracy, and many churches. I observed this early in my academic career. When I first started teaching at the University of Colorado, I was pressured to keep my religious views to myself. Any public expression of Christianity was considered a violation of the separation of church and state. But I noticed that my leftist colleagues were under no such restrictions. They could stand in the classroom and promote their views without any fear of repercussion. They could share their most deeply held beliefs, and I couldn't. I witnessed the double standard by which the Christian faith was judged and Marxism excused. Marxism has indeed returned in great power to much of America. It comes in various disguises. Black Lives Matter is an obviously Marxist movement, but it is not really disguised. They publicly proclaim themselves to be Marxists. Critical race theory is Marxist to its core, while it demands to be the dominant curriculum in America's schools. People who call themselves progressives or leftists operate under thoroughly Marxist assumptions. So Marxism has returned. Karl Marx is the most powerful cult leader of the past 150 years. Marxism is a Christian cult. It is religious through and through. But a Christian cult, you say? When I was a graduate student in theology, one of my professors defined a Christian cult as a group that takes a true doctrine of Christianity and distorts it. The example he used was the Jehovah's Witnesses. They take a true doctrine, the humanity of Jesus, and distort it by making Jesus little more than human. Marxists take a true doctrine of Christianity, the equal worth of all people in the eyes of God, taught in Genesis 1.27, and distort it beyond recognition. I'm not the only one calling Marxism a religion. Jordan Peterson, recently in an interview in the Wall Street Journal, asserts that leftists attacking Western culture are, quote, possessed with a religious idea, end quote. Alexandre de Sanctis, writing in the National Review, says, The leftist worldview functions as a religion, punishing or coercing dissenters and silencing heretics. Damien Thompson in the British magazine The Spectator says Black Lives Matter is a cult. Their protests are indeed a form of displaced religious activity. This idea is not new. Eighty years ago, the world's greatest historian, Arnold Toynbee, said, quote, Communism, which is another of our latter-day religions, is, I think, a leaf taken from the book of Christianity, a leaf torn out and misread, end quote. That's almost the exact definition of a Christian cult. Marxism is powerful. Hazoni observes that liberals over time capitulate to the Marxists, whether the subject is God and religion, man and woman, honor and duty, family, nation, or anything else. They are too weak to withstand it. Marxism has worked its way into everyday life of Americans. In the words of Roman Catholic theologian Joseph Bottom, it sustains the certitude of salvation with a self-perpetuating spiritual aura. Bottom argues that Marxism and other non-Christian ideas have succeeded on religious terms. Make no mistake, Marxism is now the state religion of the United States of America. Hazoni is right. It is seizing control of American media companies, 
universities, the entire educational establishment, corporations, foundations, the courts, the government, and many, many churches. Evangelical pulpits often support Marxist organizations. I want to turn now to the seven basic doctrinal convictions of Marxism and why they are wrong. Their number one doctrine, and by far the most important, is that there is no God. In Romans 1.20, the Apostle Paul says that God's existence is clear to everyone. However, as he says in verse 21, Paul says that men do not honor God or thank Him. So what happens as a result? Paul says their thinking becomes futile, pointless, empty. Darkness descends upon them. They think they are smart, but they have become fools. This is a perfect description of Marxism. They think they are the smartest people in the world, but they are deceived. And as a result, all of their prescriptions for society end in many of the greatest catastrophes to ever befall the human race. Marxist doctrine number two. Human beings are basically good. People, according to Marx, are basically good, but they are basically stupid. So an intellectual elite has to tell them how to think. Which is why the Marxists are always, always totalitarians. They have to control every aspect of your existence because you aren't smart enough to make good decisions for yourself. This explains what is called in the West right now, cancel culture. Marxist doctrine number three. The goal of every society is absolute equality. When you see unequal outcomes, according to the Marxists, be it in income, education, or anything else, you suspect a sinister evil at work causing this inequality. This is the organizing principle of all Marxist evaluations of society. And this is why they hate capitalism. Capitalism is not fundamentally about money. It is fundamentally about freedom. And freedom always, always produces unequal outcomes. So capitalism must be eradicated. Marxist doctrine number four. Historically, people have always divided themselves up into classes. One class is the oppressor class, and the other class is the oppressed class. Hence, conflict is the permanent state of mankind. Every historical situation requires revolution, the oppressed rising up and destroying the oppressor. Marxist doctrine number five. Because of the oppressor-oppressed nature of society, violence is essential. In fact, violence is morally right. This is why Marxist governments have murdered more of their own citizens as a matter of state policy than all other governments in the history of mankind combined. When I was a professor at the University of Colorado, I had a Marxist teaching assistant. And professors tried to give their TAs an opportunity to teach. And since I had a lecture coming up on the appeal of Marxism, I decided to let my TA, a true believer, teach the class. I remember he took my lecture notes and presented them to the class almost unedited. But then at the end he said, Dr. Mitchell has given eight reasons why Marxism has so much appeal. I want to give one more. In a Marxist revolution, we get to kill the oppressor. My students just stared and shivered, but at least they had gotten a look at what Marxist revolutions aim to do. Marxist doctrine number six, there is no such thing as objective truth. All so-called truth is merely a construction, a creation of the dominant society. Marx said that the oppressor class invents truth that allows it to maintain its oppression. That is why the Board of Seattle's public schools recently decided that math is racist, because it is a product of the oppressor class, and it seems as though oppressors are better at math than the oppressed. Radical feminists have taught for years there are no important biological differences between men and women. The differences are socially constructed, a purely Marxist idea. And now the rage to change one's gender, since gender is a social construction, not objective biological reality. I have dealt with this in another video, but make no mistake, it's whole cloth a Marxist idea. Marxist doctrine number seven. The revolution of the oppressed brings heaven to earth. 
at the end of time, the oppressed finally destroy the oppressor and a utopian state descends upon the earth. Marxist doctrine number eight. Marxism is a typical religion in that one is saved by doing good works. In Marxism, you do not have a soul to save, but you do want to live what you consider an authentic life. For the Marxists, what are those good works? Left-wing political activism. Joseph Bottom has said, you save your soul not by living a good life, but by how you vote. Supporting left-wing causes saves your soul. Notice Marxists do not believe in personal morality. A person can live a dreadfully immoral life, but still be viewed heroically by Marxists if they hold the correct political views. Marxism has a clear set of doctrinal beliefs, but Marxism is wrong, tragically wrong. To begin with, Marxism is wrong about God. There is indeed a God. He sits enthroned in the heavens. Let's go back to Psalm 2. According to that passage, God laughs at the raging Marxists. He holds them in derision. He will speak to them in his wrath. He will break them with a rod of iron. And haven't we already seen this? There have been approximately 40 or more Marxist states in the past hundred years, and most of them have already been obliterated from the face of the earth. None were conquered by an outward force. They died mysterious deaths from within. There are only a handful of Marxist states in the world today. North Korea, Cuba, Venezuela. And don't you doubt for a minute that our God will not break them with a rod of iron. God creates the reality in which we live. It is not socially constructed, but fixed by His almighty hand and creative power, as stated in His Word. Marxism is wrong about God, and it's wrong about man. Man is not basically good. He is tainted with original sin and capable of every manner of evil. The great task of every society is to control the evil of its citizens. No one proves the biblical truth of humanity more than the Marxists. They prove the Bible is right, that men and women are sinners. Marxism is wrong about constant class conflict. Society always breaks down into different groups or classes, but they are not automatically at war with each other. There are trade-offs. The different groups usually choose to get along with each other. The wars in world history have not been between classes, but between tribes or nations. Blacks have been oppressed in America, but we are also the best country in the history of the world for blacks to live in. We have by far the richest black community that has ever existed. We have a giant, successful black middle class. American blacks are among the most famous and successful people who have ever lived. According to the Wall Street Journal, last year, 22 million black Africans entered a lottery to get visas to come to the United States of America. Why did they do that? Because we're systemically racist? No, they don't plan to come here because they think they will be oppressed. They come here to be free and rich. Marxism is wrong about equality. The Bible has created the only worldview in history that considers all human beings as equally valuable. And that's where Marxism gets the idea from the Bible. But equal outcomes in income or education or talents have never occurred and never will. The New Testament teaches that each one of us is differently gifted. Some of us will be better at certain things than others. C.S. Lewis devotes a chapter to this issue in his wonderful book, Miracles. He says inequality produces one of the finest human traits, admiration. We admire the skills and gifts of other people and we applaud them. And it is good for our souls to do so. Inequality is a good and marvelous thing. I have three black sons and it may come as a surprise to you that they are better athletes than I am, quite a bit better. I have sat in the stands many hours applauding their accomplishments, and yes, quite often envying them. It was good for me to be sitting there watching them succeed. So Marxism is wrong about God, man, creation, economics, class warfare, and egalitarianism. Finally, Marx is wrong 
about the promise of heaven on earth. It has turned out to be a colossal lie, one of the greatest of all time. When the so-called oppressed conquer the so-called oppressors, utopia does not ensue. Instead, as Yozoni says, we see history's greatest parade of horrors. Marxists have created one nightmare after another in civilization. There is a heaven, but it does not exist on earth, and it will be populated by those who have been saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. In watching Marxism's march through our culture, it can be discouraging, but do not be discouraged. Marxism will not win. It has already been defeated scores of times in the past century, and it will be defeated again. In my next video, I'll explain why. Until then, may our God continue to bless you in a mighty way.